obfuscate. Your challenge begins now. Okay, I can do this. What? Where am I? Wait a second. I haven't shown up on this channel since 2018. Hey, you idiot! Prepare to start crying at the fate of Master Junior Trova. Really? That's gonna be my opponent? Yup! <laughs> huh? What? What did you do to me? Obfuscate, use this! Uh, good luck, Obfuscate! Man, I forgot how much that eggshell twerp bothers me. Hey everyone! So, for any of you that were completely lost from the skit at the beginning of the video, this is actually the final episode of a five-part series I'm doing called Issa Labyrinth. If you want to catch up on the rest of the story, you can do that by watching the previous four episodes. But, you don't have to if you don't want to. In this video, I will be creating a simple game consisting of a single turn-based RPG battle. In this game, this monster named Obfuscate is battling this eggshell-wearing jerk named Junior Troopa. Junior Troopa is a character from Paper Mario that I used to put in my Yasolang videos up until 2018. But, now he's back. Obfuscate and Junior Troopa will both have very similar move pools. Both will be able to do a simple attack for a small amount of damage, a magic attack for more damage, and they will both be able to heal themselves to replenish damage. Whoever runs out of HP first loses. And this game will be programmed in Intercal. Intercal, short for Compiler Language with No Pronounceable Acronym, is an esoteric programming language that was designed in 1972 by two college students, Don Woods and Jim Lyon. Intercal was designed to both parody the programming languages of the time, while being completely different from them. The end result was an unreadable, tedious mess. Which, I guess means it isn't all that different from the programming languages that came before it. To give you just a small taste of the type of programming language that Intercal is, all statements in Intercal start with do, but if you try to run a long enough program, the compiler will say you aren't being polite enough. This is because you need to say please a few times to be polite, but if you say please too much, the compiler views you as overly polite, so you need to strike a balance between being too polite and not polite enough. Also, since Intercal was designed to be as different from other programming languages as possible, you will not find any convenient techniques for flow control or data labeling in Intercal, so Intercal code ends up looking terrible while being awkward and confusing to follow. And for some reason, I have decided it would be a good idea to try to write a game in Intercal. Oh well, it's too late to go back now. When it comes to printing text, SLangs usually fall into one of two categories. It's either trivially easy to print text, or annoyingly hard to print text. It should be no surprise to any of you that Intercal falls into the latter category. But in Intercal, they take the annoyingness of writing text to a whole new level. Strings are stored as arrays, represented by a tail. Yes, that's what the symbol's called in Intercal. The length of the string is specified as tail number gets, followed by the string's length. Afterwards, a sequence of numbers is put into the array to tell it what characters to print, and then it's read out. And no, these numbers aren't just basic ASCII values. In order to find out which numbers to use, you take the ASCII value, convert the number to binary, flip it, subtract it from the previous letter's code, and add 256. This complicated procedure is necessary because Intercal actually reads ASCII characters on a circular tape, and when printing out text, Intercal reads the characters from inside of the tape, meaning it sees the bits as being reversed. As you may imagine, it would be nice if this process was fully automated, so I automated it in a different programming language. All I need to do is specify a string in this variable here, and this Java program will spit out some Intercal corresponding to the string. Now that I have this Intercal code, all I need to do is put it into a subroutine, and it can be called from within the program. In the final version of the game, I made a string table that contains all the game's text. This makes up about two-thirds of the game's file, which of course is over a thousand lines. So, now we can get to the interesting stuff. This game only has three variables that we care about. Obfuscate's HP, Junior Troopa's HP, and Obfuscate's stamina. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the stamina mechanic. Each action that Obfuscate takes uses stamina, and when he runs out, he faints and loses. 
Obfuscate's HP is stored into the variable designated as Spot 100. His stamina is stored in Spot 150, and Junior Troopa's HP is in Spot 200. Each turn of the game begins by printing these three variables. Each stat has a label that is printed through a subroutine called the String Table. And yes, everything in Intercal is labeled with an arbitrary number. When integers in Intercal are read out to the screen, they are printed as Roman numerals, so this game requires that the player is able to read Roman numerals. That's okay though, since 56% of Americans believe we shouldn't use Arabic numerals, so I guess future Americans might grow up using Roman numerals anyway. It's future proof! On Obfuscate's turn, the player is asked to input a number corresponding to how much stamina they want Obfuscate to use. One stamina will cause Obfuscate to use his simple attack, two stamina will cause him to heal, and three will cause him to use his magic attack. Input and intercal is received through the write in command. The user inputs numbers as words, so to input a 3, you type 3. Like this. Of course, English isn't the only language you can use. Intercal also supports writing in numbers in Sanskrit, Basque, Tagalog, Classical Noadal, Georgian, Kwakiutl, Volapuk, and Latin. Because of course it does. So now the player has typed a number, and it's stored into the variable identified as spot1. We must now use that to determine the next action the program takes. But Intercal does not actually have a straightforward if statement system, nor does it really have an alternative. So what do we do? Well, in Intercal, you can abstain from running specific commands, which causes the compiler to ignore those commands. So if you abstain from reading out, any subsequent readouts will not happen. Now, if you're going to criticize me for giving you an abstinence-only education, you should know you're able to unabstain commands by reinstating them. So now they'll run again. Now, when I wrote my first programs in Intercal, I didn't know that when you abstain from something, you're able to specify how many times you abstain. If you abstain mesh2, for example, you will need to reinstate the command twice in order to use it again. This constant can be replaced by a variable, and that's how we use the player's input to determine the game's next course of action. If the player typed a 1, the program abstains once, and it does label 100 next. If they typed a 2, the program will instead abstain twice, so it skips label 100 and runs label 110. Lastly, if the player typed a 3, it will abstain three times and run label 120. And yeah, I actually didn't know that this feature existed in Intercal when I made that FizzBuzz program a couple years ago. This feature would have been really helpful, but oh well. Obfuscate's punch attack simply subtracts 4 from Junior Troopa's HP, and subtracts 1 from Obfuscate's stamina. This is accomplished using the subtract subroutine from the Intercal subroutine library. All three of these actions are essentially like Pokemon versions. There are some slight differences, but for the most part, they're pretty much the same. Healing replaces the subtracting of Junior Troopa's HP with adding to Obfuscate's HP, and the magic attack is just the punch attack with the numbers changed. After the attacks, the program jumps to label 300, which contains... At this point in the game, we have Schrodinger's Troopa. He is either defeated or not defeated, but the program doesn't know whether or not he is defeated or not until we check. And so we check. To check if a number is 0 or not, we use the expression 1 over x plus 1, where x is the variable. If x is 0, then the expression will simplify to 1, but if x is any higher than 0, it simplifies to something lower than 1. Intercal cannot handle fractions, so a half, a third, a quarter, and so on will all simplify down to 0. After performing this division using the Intercal subroutine library, we abstain the result. So we either abstain 0 times, or abstain 1 times. Now if we abstain 0 times, we do label 3 a 1 next. But if we abstained one time due to Junior Troopa's HP being zero, label 301 is instead skipped, next thing is reinstated, and it does label 560 next. At label 560, a win message is printed and the game ends. Now, Obfuscate could potentially leave Junior Troopa with less than zero HP. Subtracting below zero causes the integers to underflow, but that's okay since adding back up to the max integer value causes it to overflow back. So, to check if Obfuscate left Junior Troopa with less than 0 HP, I had it do another check to see if he had negative 2 HP, another one to see if he had negative 4 HP, and so on. But, if the program is able to make it to label 304, we know that Junior Troopa's HP is greater than 0, and he's allowed to take his turn. 
He has three attack options at labels 350, 360, and 370. Junior Trupa selects his attack by using Interkel's Probabilistic Execution. The percent %60 means that there is a 60% chance that the following command, nexting to label 350, will be run. The same thing happens for label 360, and label 370 runs if we make it here without running either of the previous labels. Junior Troopa's attacks are very similar to Obfuscate's attacks, but they deal with Obfuscate's HP when dealing damage, and Junior Troopa's HP when healing. Junior Troopa also doesn't need to worry about stamina. All of these attacks end with nexting to label 305, which does nothing. So, if label 305 does nothing, what's the point? I'm glad you asked. At this point in the program, there is a come from 305, which is like a go-to, but reversed. Once the program reaches label 305, it jumps to the come from. Well, that just sounds like a go-to statement. With extra steps. Yeah. But anyway, after the come from is the point in the game where it checks if Obfuscate is alive. To be fair, I didn't have to use come from for this, but it kinda appeared while I was writing the program, and I couldn't be bothered to remove it. Oh well. So, now we check if Obfuscate is dead using a similar method to checking if Junior Troopa is dead. This time, if Obfuscate's HP is zero or less, a lose message is printed. And if you think that's a lot of checks to see if Obfuscate lost the game, we also need to check if Obfuscate's stamina is less than zero as well. So, a large portion of this game is just checking if variables are less than zero, since Interkel has no way to do a less than operation of any kind. But, if Obfuscate's HP and stamina are both greater than zero, the program does label one next. And, oh look, that's where the game loop started. So the game loop is now closed, and the game is now complete. Hooray for that. Glad that's over. And it looks like Idex is going back to normal. Hey friends, what did I miss? Both nothing and everything. So guys, uh, I guess I'm out of challenges for you. Nobody's actually made it this far before. They usually just get super frustrated and I send them home angrier than they were before. So does that mean we're able to go home now? Hmm. Oh yeah, about that. You're actually in a nightmare. Please wake up. Yeah, Idex, please wake up. What, you mean you didn't know this? Uh, Idex, wake up! You yeah, wake up! Ah! Oh, jeez, I just had a horrible nightmare. I got beaten up by a stupid lizard guy with a magic wand. And worst of all, I was in a Trouble 1 video again! Oh, hey, Junior Troopa. I haven't seen you in a while. Ah! 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 Where am I? We're still at the office building. I was applying for a position, but you fell asleep during the interview. For, uh, three hours now. Oh, well, you're fired! Get out! Now! Oh, uh, okay. See you around, I guess. Man, that was a ton of time wasted. Ugh, what a cliche ending! I just hate it!